The following video covers the installation of the PLP compression dead end for ACSR and ACSS conductors. This video is for demonstration purposes only. Be sure to read and completely understand the application procedure supplied with the product before installing it. The compression dead end includes an aluminum alloy dead end body with terminal pad, a galvanized steel dead end eye, a felt washer, and a steel ball for plugging the filler port. Some kits also include a compression jumper terminal and galvanized steel connection hardware. Required tools include compression press with the appropriate size dies, conductor cutter and strand removal tool, compression filler compound, caulking gun, conductor wire brush, hammer, flathead screwdriver, pliers, file, measuring tape, and utility knife. Begin by cleaning and wire brushing the entire area to be covered by the compression hardware per your standard company practices. Check that no residue or surface particles remain. Remove the plastic plug from the aluminum body and inspect the inside bores of the hardware to ensure that there are no sharp points or other defects. If flash or small aluminum bits are present, clear out with a spare piece of conductor. Measure from the neural mark on the steel dead end eye to the end of the tube. Add one inch to this length to allow for aluminum strand expansion when the outer aluminum body is compressed. Mark this length on the conductor as the point where the aluminum strands will be cut back. Apply tape approximately one inch back from the cutting mark to secure the aluminum strands and maintain the conductor diameter after the cut is made. Cut the aluminum outer strands at the cutting mark to expose the steel core. Take care not to damage the steel core strands during this process. To prevent damage and reduce preparation time, PLP recommends the use of a conductor trimming tool. After all the aluminum strands are removed, any flash or burrs on the outside can be removed with a file. Secure the conductor core strands with tape. A hose clamp can be used to help hold the strands in place while tape is applied. Mark the depth of the steel eye to the neural mark on the conductor core strands. With the tapered end facing the conductor, slide the outer aluminum dead end body all the way on and past the exposed steel core. Remove the tape from the conductor core and insert it into the steel eye, lining up the end with the mark previously made on the strands. Install, clean, and lubricate the correct compression die. This is marked on the steel dead end eye. Insert the assembly into the press with the edge of the die lined up with the neural mark. Before compressing, double check that the end of the dead end eye is lined up with the mark on the core strands. Compress the steel eye, starting at the neural and working all the way to the end. Compression should overlap by about 25% and the dies must be pushed to their maximum extent in the press. Curvature of the eye should be kept to a minimum and tips on this can be found in the application procedure. Slide the aluminum dead end body towards the end of the conductor until the aluminum strands enter the end. Remove the tape and continue sliding the dead end on until it sits against the felt washer on the eye. Align the eye and terminal pad in the desired orientation to each other. Inject appropriate inhibitor compound through the filler hole in the aluminum body. For ACSS conductors, the inhibitor must be rated for temperatures up to 250 degrees Celsius. Cease application when inhibitor seeps out the tapered end of the hardware. This will continue to ooze out the ends as compressions are applied. Seal the filler hole by inserting the stainless steel ball. The plastic bag containing the ball can be used to help position it. Tap the ball into the filler hole using a hammer and remove the plastic bag if used. Peen over the aluminum edges of the filler hole with a hammer and flathead screwdriver to secure the ball into place. With the appropriate dies installed, Position the aluminum dead end body in the press and check alignment on the conductor. Compress, starting at the press first neural directly over the steel eye and the end of the aluminum body, and continue up to the stop neural. Compression should overlap by about 25% and the dies must be pushed to their maximum extent in the press. Leave the center section between the neurals uncompressed then continue applying compressions from the second press first neural all the way to the end, including the tapered section. 
clean off any excess tape or inhibitor. Any flash left on the aluminum tube after compression should be removed with pliers and sharp edges should be filed to a smooth finish. For the jumper terminal application, begin by cleaning and wire brushing the entire area that will be covered by the compression. The end of the conductor should be cut evenly and be free of any flash or burrs. Remove the plastic plug from the aluminum body and inspect the inside bores of the hardware to ensure that there are no sharp points or other defects. Measure the length from the neural mark to the tapered end of the jumper terminal and mark this length on the conductor from the cut end. Remove any tape or hose clamp that was used on the end of the conductor. Apply the appropriate inhibitor compound to the entire area of the conductor that will be covered by the compression. Insert the conductor fully into the jumper terminal, ensuring that the end lines up with the mark previously made on the conductor. Following the same procedures as before with the dead end, compress the jumper terminal, starting at the neural mark and working all the way to the end, including the tapered section. Any flash left on the aluminum tube after compression should be removed with pliers and sharp edges should be filed to a smooth finish. Evenly coat the terminal pads with electrical joint compound and attach the jumper to the dead end using the included hardware. Bolts should be tightened evenly to a minimum torque of 40 foot-pounds to ensure a good connection. The installation of the compression dead end and jumper terminal is now complete. All safety guidelines set forth in the appropriate application procedure for this product must be reviewed and followed prior to installing this product. The installation shown is intended to illustrate the application method of the product only. It is not intended to supersede any standard utility safety guidelines and practices or use of required protective equipment.